In today's video, I'm sharing with you four thrift flips that I made from items that I found at the thrift store. So here we go. For my first thrift flip, I found this really neat wooden piece at the thrift store. It has a really lovely amber glass knob on it that I really like. And with any piece that I bring home from the thrift store that I can't throw in the washing machine or wash in the sink, I use alcohol to clean it off. So that was the first thing I did. And then I removed the hardware. Now you can see in the upper right part of your screen is a little metal hook that had previously been attached to the medallion behind the doorknob and it just came off. <laughs> but that's okay. I wound up not even reattaching it. I could have used E6000 to reattach it, but I actually really like the idea of using the doorknob to hang anything that I would want to hang on this item. So I wound up not reattaching that hook. I decided I wanted to do a crackle finish on this object and I got the idea from a subscriber who suggested it to me when she saw this in my thrift haul as well as my friend Robin Johnson who does this technique a lot. I will link her video in my description box below. But basically you take school glue just like a white glue. Mine is clear that just happens to be what I had and you put a good coat of glue all over the areas that you want to have the paint crackle and then you let that dry completely. At first I didn't plan to paint that little top ledge but I did change my mind in the end. And here's what it looked like when it was all dry. Now my glue dried with little bubbles in it. I'm not exactly sure why. It might be just because it was clear or it was from the Dollar Tree. I don't really know but it didn't wind up affecting the finished product. And then you take your paint and you paint over a small area of the object. Now I used chalk paint. I think Robin uses latex and I'm pretty sure you can also use acrylic, although I don't know for sure. I haven't tried it, but you just paint the object with your paint. Now I kind of charged right in there and then I forgot that I was trying to leave the top of it wood. That's why I was trying to get some of my paint off and I came in with a smaller brush so that I could go a little more carefully at that edge and not have to like tape it off or anything. And then I used a hair dryer. This is my crafting hair dryer. And I just heated up the paint. And then you see the crackles form. So it just, it's kind of cool. I, I don't know, it's kind of cool. I guess what's happening is the glue is shrinking underneath the paint and that's what makes it crackle. And you can see here, I did make an error. I actually did overlap my paint sections a little too much. And that does actually affect how well the paint crackles. So if you were to try this technique, make sure you don't overlap your sections of paint because it will not crackle as well. I wound up having to sand it and put more glue in that little section so that it would crackle as well as the rest of the project. My crafts are always a work in progress. So here I changed my mind about leaving that little ledge wood. I just didn't like it. So I painted it green and I absolutely love it now. So this is what it looks like before I put the antique wax on it. And then I grabbed my Art wine, Art Wines, Art Mines antique wax and Basically, you brush this on over the whole project and then you use a rag to wipe off the excess. I always use a damp rag because I like to get a lot of the wax off. Like I really just want it to be a faint hint of patina on there and maybe some brown left, or left behind in like the crevices. But I don't want the whole thing to look just dirty. So using water helps you to get excess wax off. So that's after one wipe on and wipe off of the wax. But when I wax my projects, it's definitely like a process. And so I usually go back in. So here I had decided I wanted a little more color on the front of it. So I just put, you know, it's the same process. You just wipe it on and wipe it off, just like a karate kid. And this is what it looked like when I was satisfied with the result. Then I got my top coat. I just have this Craft Smart top coat. It's basically like watered down Mod Podge. That's what it smells like anyway. And I just brushed that on. I always use that on my chalk painted and other painted projects. I don't know. Makes them a little more durable because I do use my things. And 
and then all that was left to do was to reattach the hardware, which I tried to do with my screwdriver and then decided I needed to use my drill driver. If you're enjoying my video, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I also have a thrifting channel and a home and garden channel, all of which I will link in my description box below. And this is the finished product. Please excuse the lighting in my bedroom. And this may not be its final wall grouping. I'm redecorating my bedroom. It's going to go in here somewhere. This is just where I put it for now. I actually really like it with that painting, which is also thrifted, and that butterfly. And that little wreath on it is just a Dollar Tree wreath that I glued some of that moss to. Anyway, I'm really pleased with the final result. This video is part of the monthly Open Flippin' Friday collaboration hosted by Jamie from Border Bananas and Border Bananas DIY. I will link the playlist as well as her two channels in my description box below. For my next thrift flip, I found this matchbox holder at the Goodwill Outlet Bins. I love vintage matchbox holders. I only have one of the tin kind in my kitchen, and I don't do apples, so this really doesn't fit my decor, so I wanted to upcycle it. I wanted to show you my sander. People have asked me about it before. It's this little Black & Decker handheld cordless sander. I have no affiliation, but it came in a set of three tools. They're low voltage, so you're not going to build a house with them, but they're great for crafting. So the first thing I did was to take my little sander and sand off the apples, because anytime there's paint on something, it will show through your paint you'll at least you might see the raised texture of the apples and I didn't want that to happen so I gave it a good sanding as well as some other parts of it just so that it would all kind of be consistent then I wiped the whole thing down with a little bit of alcohol and I'm not sure I don't think I mentioned it in the first project but that little alcohol pump I got it from the Dollar Tree it is super useful to have on your craft table because you can just pump it and it has a cap I don't know it's super useful I got that tip from some other channel and so I'm passing it along and then once it was cleaned I gave the whole thing two coats of white chalk paint and then I took these transfers, which I recently found in the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree, and I decided that I was going to apply some of the transfers to the front of my matchbox holder. Because if you look at the vintage ones, you'll see that they're often decorated with florals or fruit like this one was, or birds, you know, just cute little decorative motifs. And so I kind of wanted to mimic that in my project. I've been really enjoying including pinks like pale pinks in my decor so I decided to use the roses on this sheet and the easiest way to go about this was to cut them out and you have to be really careful with these transfers unlike the letter transfers that I've used from the Dollar Tree these with the decorative pictures transfer much easier so it, you have to be careful not to put that sheet down on anything you don't want to transfer the picture onto because it will stick and so I just cut the pieces out and then you can kind of layer them which is what i was doing here just kind of layer them to make the graphic the way that you want it to look and then i just used a little plastic putty knife from the dollar tree you could use you know a chopstick or a skewer or whatever to rub the transfer onto the wood And I printed out a little decal that says matches because a lot of the matchbox holders say matches on them. That's what makes them charming. You could use scrapbook letters or some of the rub-on transfer letters from the Dollar Tree, you know, whatever you have access to. I just used my Cricut because I was doing a crafting weekend and I happened to have all the supplies out. So I figured why not? And then I added a few more embellishments. I really wanted to use this bird. I had kind of hemmed and hawed about it, but in the end I decided I needed to have the bird on there. I love birds. That's something you might not know about me, but I really love birds, so I was happy to add that on. Once I had all the embellishments looking the way I wanted them to, I wanted to distress it. So I used a little piece of sandpaper and this worked really well on all of the corners and edges, but I was having trouble getting the paint off like the, the center pieces of the wood. So for that, I pulled out my little sander and that worked a lot better. Then I pulled out my Deco Art Brown Wax and 
I just put a light coat of this. I didn't use the antique wax. The antique wax is a little bit darker. I didn't want it to get too dark. So I just kind of brushed on a little, you can see it's a little bit of a lighter color. And so just put a little bit of this to give it a little more of a patina. And once I was pleased with the result, I gave it a top coat of my Craft Smart top coat again. And here's the final product hanging on my wall in the kitchen near my vintage cheese graters. I love it. I think it's adorable. And yes, I put boxwood in it for all of you ladies who have noticed that yes, I really like boxwood. Uh, it's just something I like. So I think it looks really good. My next thrift flip is really easy. I found these pictures at a thrift store. I think they were 49 cents a piece. You can see that on the back there. Brass is coming back, so I've been incorporating a little bit of it into my decor. And I also grabbed these stickers from the Dollar Tree, as well as some black cardstock. And the first thing that I did was to remove the glass from the frames. And I was just using this little tool. I bought a bunch of Cricut tools off of Amazon, and this is one of them. It almost looks like a nail manicure tool but it has like a flat edge to it so I used that to pry up the little metal prongs that were holding the glass in and then I cleaned the frames with my alcohol and I did use glass cleaner on the little pieces of round glass that I had pulled out. Then I set the frames aside and I used the glass as a pattern to cut two little black circles from the cardstock. And just like in elementary school, I just folded it in half so that I would only have to cut once. You know, these things we learned when we were kids are still useful when you craft as grown-ups. <laughs> and then I had picked two of the stickers that I thought would look really nice as a pair. And I just put one in the center of each of my black circles. Now I am going to be using these little frames in my bedroom again with my redecorating project. So I picked ones that would go with my decor, but that's what's great about this is you could really, you know, choose any stickers. They don't even have to be the ones from the Dollar Tree uh, that will go with wherever you plan to put a project like this. And then I just reassembled the frames and put the glass back in. And that was it. These were so easy, but I really love them. I have not hung them on the wall of my bedroom yet because I'm not sure which wall they're going on. Again, I didn't want to hang too many things because I'm planning on taking it all down and painting, but they will be going in my bedroom somewhere. For my last thrift flip for today, I saw on another channel and I have lost track of the channel, but basically she just glued a teacup and saucer together. So you want to find a pair that fit really well together where the saucer fits really well on top of the teacup and then you use e6000 and you just glue them together and the only tip for this project is make sure you put the glue where the cup and the saucer actually come in contact so for my pair it was right around that edge there and that was it <laughs> this was so easy but i really love it my only regret is that i only got one of these pairs of cup and saucer there were several at the thrift store i really should have gotten two because i would love to be able to style two of these together and this is what it looks like when it's all dry so the idea is that you put a candle in the center and then you can put ivy or florals i put these cute little beads that i happen to have I don't know what I'll do when I style it finally. This isn't where it's staying, but uh, I wanted to be able to show it to you. I'll probably put it on a table in my family room for my spring decor. And that's all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed these thrift flips on Flippin' Friday, and I hope that you will check out the playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. <music>